Do you know what I face up with when I wake up every single morning? The joy of life? No. I see that in Rag there are new retrieval methods getting developed every single day. Well, this is how we evolve, right? This is how we complicate stuff. Now I have no clue how to implement the best retrieval method for my RAG application because of too many choices. Well, it's complicated until you find a solution for it. And there's a new solution for this challenge called Adaptive RAG. With Adaptive RAG, you can have multiple retrieval methods implemented in your RAG or chat with data application and then dynamically and intelligently decide for the best retrieval method based on the type of and complexity of user question in your RAG application. So try all those retrieval methods in your RAG. Yes, show it to me. Sure, then let's go. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, let's see what is adaptive rack, or better to say, what is the challenge that we are trying to resolve with adaptive rack, which is a solution. And this screen that I'm sharing is coming from their paper they just published on end of March 2024, so fairly recent. And what we are trying to resolve is some of the questions that you ask from the rack are complex not every question can be answered in the same retrieval method uh, let's follow this actually nice picture so in their published paper that i'm showing right now they're saying that let's say you have a simple query what's the birthday of michael right for answering that question that's a very simple one you just go ahead one time retrieve a chunk of data and you answer the question but sometimes just one time retrieving maybe is not enough the question is complex so you have to uh, do multiple retrieval in, instead of one because maybe with just one you will get an inaccurate result so what is the second solution we go with multi-step approach that means k times let's say five times or ten times i uh, go and retrieve the knowledge to answer the question so for complex queries that's a good idea i get some good answers not inaccurate one anymore but for some simple queries that there's no need for doing k time retrieval it is inefficient. I'm paying for nothing. That's a very simple question. Why should I go with gain time? So I need to sort of have a dynamic approach, which is adaptive approach. So what adaptive approach does is sometimes you have a question that doesn't need your knowledge, uh, knowledge database to answer. For example, what's the capital uh, purse is the capital of what country? For this, I don't need to retrieve anything. That's a knowledge that LLM might directly answer to me without any retrieval stuff. Sometimes there's a simple query with one time I can answer, sometimes it's complex, so I go with k-time retrieval. What I can do, I can have a classifier here at the middle to define based on the complexity of this question, is it a simple question, is it a straightforward, or is it a complex one? Then this classifier will decide what RAG approach I should take. I go with single step, multi-step, or any retrieval method that you come up with by yourself. We already developed multiple videos I, I posted on YouTube that talks about different retrieval ways, Raptor, Flare. You can take any of them and have it as a choice and let this classifier decide. Now the question is, what is this classifier? But when I was reading their, their paper, they talked about another uh, small language model, SLM, can be chosen or fine-tuned to classify what retrieval approach I should take based on the complex queries or question types. Or even you can have a prompt and use an LLM model that, hey, check out the user question. If user question is like this and that and that, that's a complex one. Or that's a simple one. So that LLM will decide what retrieval approach need to be taken to answer the question. And then you can have the benefits of all retrieval methods and be efficient, not using just one retrieval method for all questions. This is the idea. So what I did in Llama Index, they have wrapped this idea in a nice coding example. So let me share my Google Colab that I ran. The reason that I wanna go through this notebook that I executed before I recording this video is not for letting you learn this code and make sure you must develop the solution using Llama Index, not necessarily. This is another way to conduct the message of what is the benefit of using Adaptive Rack 
and think about it implementing by yourself with your retrieval methods in your projects it's a very simple while a smart idea and even developing all from scratch without using a wrapper should be very straightforward as long as you know the idea behind and develop your own retrieval multiple retrieval approaches and use adaptive rack on the top to choose so to give you an example I install llama index and for my large language model I use mistral but again this is just an example okay so that's why I had to install these and again I add the reference code that I use for running this to the discord channel the discord channel link is on the video description below click on it when you go there there's a reference section inside the channel click on the reference section you will see the link to this code that I'm running so after installation of course you need to make sure you have your Mistral API key I remove that after record uh, running this code for recording and definitely we need to import some stuff then I'm gonna come back to this why we need this stuff and for my embedding model again I use Mistral so I imported that and this part if you run this code in Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab that's all about running this nested events loop for for main, making sure that we print out all the logs so that's just the best practice we can follow it's not related to adaptive rag and stuff now what we're gonna do for this demo we have downloaded some annual report of Lyft for 2020, 2021, 2022. So these are PDF files and show you an example of one of them. I believe I have them open. Let me show it to you. There you go. That's just one of them for 2020. It has almost around 100 ish or 200 pages. So not, not a short one. And we have three of these. And as you can see, it has pictures, tables, and all information about some annual report. Okay, so getting back to the code, we get that for 2020, 21, and 22. So what we need to do, we just load the data with the reader imported from Llama index. I imported that on the top. So everything we, we actually call is imported from here, right? So I'm not going to come back here again. Sorry, let me go back to the place. Yes, we loaded the data here. And now I have 20, 21, 22, all the time, all, all of them loaded. And using vector store index, which is coming from Llama index again, I can start create um, embeddings and vectors out of these documents. So you might question, what is my vector database stuff? What are the chunks and stuff? Well, because this is just a simple demonstration, vector store index by Llama is using my memory, the memory of the Google Cola, which is very limited. So all these chunks and embeddings are stored in the memory, but this is not something you're gonna do in your projects. Again, this is just for the purpose of demonstration. And as you can see, it chunk my PDFs in the memory and called my Mistral AI model for creating embeddings. So these are all the chunks, HTTP calls are work properly and now I have my embeddings. Now, I want to query these PDF files when I ask a question, right? So again, using Llama index, I have to create a query engine to tell that bring top K or top five chunks of 2021 if the user question is related to 2021 lift annual report. Same thing for 20, same thing for 2022, okay? But sometimes, as I mentioned, in your rag, maybe some questions, they don't need your knowledge base. They just need LLM knowledge to answer the question. This is the part. So this is for simple queries. Coming back actually to the paper, we are actually here. The state forward ones, that doesn't need any knowledge base, right? This is our engine. We're going to come back to this. But we might also have questions that we need to reiteratively go to our chunks and answer the questions that's why i'm creating query engine separately for 20 21 and 22 and these can be multiple pdf files for 2021 not necessarily one but this is an example of how we define what chunks it need to grab from if the user question is coming from 2020 then go for this pdf or pdfs right now in order to select for example if the user question is complex it want to compare leaf 2020 with 2022 that's a complex one it need to fetch some stuff from here and then fetch some stuff from here so that's why we need to define an agent by llama index function calling agent to consider all these query engines and also let me actually show you you can see that the last one is a tool that query information that just need llm right that's why our llm query engine has been chosen for this tool if i go up this is what i'm talking about okay but 
if my query needs multiple years of data to compare 20 to 22 to and stuff then I need to call an agent what is the agent this is the agent and this agent need to be powered by some data sources and these are the tools or data sources and these are defined here so this agent is capable of accessing to all and compare which one is needed based on the complexity of the question but if the question is just asking me about 2022 data i don't want to call this agent to compare all those pdf files so i just directly go to the 2022 data the same thing for 2021 the same thing for 2020 so think about it we have one two three four five different type of queries if the queries are just for one year we go with these three the first three if the query is complex comparing multiple ones we will have to go through the agent no longer a pdf engine it's an agent engine that has comparison capabilities and the last one for general queries we just go for llm no knowledge retrieval stuff needed and this is the place that we're gonna define our classifier because we just defined this and this classifier is called router query engine in llama index again this is llama index implementation but the same concept so this router gonna decide which tool gonna be needed from on the top to answer the user question so we define that and this is the time to answer the question what is the capital of france that was the same question in the paper right and as you can tell it's it doesn't need knowledge base it just can get from llm knowledge that's why it says that oh based on this type of question query engine four is decided four is this one no actually this one yes so general queries and as you can see the general queries has been chosen because it doesn't need to triple and it gave me the answer what did leaf do in r d in 2022 so that's a simple question but from our knowledge for 2022 so query engine number two which is the questions related to activities in 2022 this is the one has been chosen for me so it knows it just go and grab some chunks so i believe it just grabbed two chunks of 2022 pdf and it answered me the question now a complex one what did lift do in r and in 2022 versus 2020 so query engine three and three is actually this one which is an agent going to be used to compare has been chosen because we are asking for a comparison and you can see there are some some chunks grabbed from 20 some chunks grabbed from 2022 and here's the comparison result the same thing if you're going to compare all of them you can see more chunks from 22 21 20 and again the complex query engine which is the agent has been chosen to answer the question so what we just did we came up with an idea of routing our retrieval method based on the type of the user question this can be as simple as, as having a prompt to define what's going to be your router method and based on that LLM output choose the technology the retrieval approach you want to answer user question or use some wrappers like llama index potentially some open source frameworks they have implemented that but i just saw that llama index has created very close to this paper so thought to show you this example again i'll add that this uh, code reference to discord channel in the video description below but don't think about taking this code as is and see how we can apply that for your project just get the idea as soon as you're done with the idea and what it does you can even develop your own custom wrapped adaptive rack with your own retrieval approaches and there are a ton of different retrieval approaches for rack getting developed every single day and you can definitely take um, benefit out of them let me know what you think about this and if you enjoy this video i appreciate if you click on like button and share your uh, thoughts in the feedback and comment section thanks all take care try to tolerate the bitterness of reality than getting fooled with sweetness of fakeness dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video take you good care